Hey, welcome to another video. So in this video, you're gonna learn about radians. So we're gonna learn about radians and how they're different from degrees. So where they come from, where they, what the foundation of them is, and how to convert between them. Actually, that's probably in the next video. But we're gonna have a very good foundation when we get there about why in the world they are different, how they're different, how to, how to use them. So here's what a radian stems from. A radian is an angular relationship between a radius and an arc length that's equal to that radius. In other words, if you take a radius of a circle, a central angle that cuts an arc, and compare them, a radian is the angle that makes the arc equal to the radius. And that's what that statement says. It's kind of kind of wordy, but a radian is a central a angle needed on any circle. And that's a big point. It doesn't matter whether the circle's small or large, one radian is the same relationship on any circle that we have. Very much like one degree, it doesn't matter the size of the circle, one degree represents a swept out angle. Well, a radian does the same thing, but it's measured differently. It's a relationship between a radius and an arc length being equal. And so the radian on a central angle, a radian is a central angle needed on any circle, to make the arc subtended, which basically just means this arc that's cut by two radii. Equal to the radius. So how's it look? If we really wrap our heads around what the idea is, it's kind of a simple idea. Uh, the idea is, hey, take, take a circle, and cut an arc with two radii that's equal to the radius. And that's what it says. It says if your radius is one or your radius is four, I'm gonna put that up in there in a minute. If your radius is one or four or 20 or 0.5, it doesn't really matter. If you take those radii, they're gonna be the same from the center of a circle. That's what a radius is. It's the distance from the center to the edge of your circle. And you start opening that. Well, your arc length, that portion of the circle that you're cutting is growing and growing and growing and growing. If you make it so that the arc length is equal to each of the radii, which have to be equal, almost looks like an equilateral triangle, except one side is the arc. Well, then once you have that angle, that central angle that's at the center of the circle is called one radian. That's, that's the unit of measurement that we use for radians. It's what it means. It's not some magic thing. It's very much like a degree, but measured differently. So the size of one radian never changes. It's just the relationship that makes the radii equal to the arc length that they are cutting. And so I'm gonna show that to you. So let's suppose that we have a unit circle. What a unit circle is, is a circle with a radius of one. I don't even care what the unit is. Notice how those radii are creating a central angle and also how those radii, once they're, they're opening, that arc length, if that's equal to the radius, whatever units they are, then the angle around the center of that circle, right here, that is one radian. Let's call that alpha for now. We would say that alpha is one radian. That's where that comes from. Now, now what if the radius is four? It, it doesn't really matter. As long as, or 14, whatever, as long as the arc that's cut by two radii equals the radius itself, well, then the angle swept out, the central angle, and central angle is just an angle that has its vertex at the center of a circle. Let's call that alpha as well. Alpha is also equal to run one radian. We can sort of abbreviate that rad. Sometimes you'll see that, which is kind of rad. Uh, anyhow, that, that's all the radian is. So if you really want the long story, you're basically just opening up two radii and cutting a portion of the circle that's a subtended arc that's equal to the radius. And on any circle you do that, the angle that you get is one radian. I hope that makes sense. I hope that it's kind of taken away some of the confusion and maybe you heard this word radian and like, I have no idea what that means. Well, this is exactly what that means. Now, on the, on the other hand, what if we open up an angle of one radian? Could you tell what the arc was? Very easily, it would be equal to a radius. Well, what happens if the angle isn't exactly one radian? Well, then we can use a proportion to find that. I'm gonna walk you through that right now. So let's suppose uh, that we have a radius 
r and r, and we're going to open this up exactly one radian, where alpha is equal to one radian. Now, do you know that alpha is one radian right now? You, you kind of have to, because if this is r and that is r, and the arc that's subtended or cut by those radii is also r, we understand that's a definition of what a radian is. And so we, we would know right now it looks kind of like an equilateral triangle. Of course, it's not because we have an arc, but if radius equals radius, which it has to, that's a center, so that has to be that way. But if this is also equal to r, that arc, that is one radian in the middle. You have to trust that because that's the definition of what a radian is. So what happens if we have a smaller or larger angle? Can we figure out the arc length from that? I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. Hopefully it's obvious to you that this would still be r and this would still be r, but this right here would not. Let's call this arc length s. And let's call this angle here theta. In your head right now, I want you thinking, is theta one radian? Is it more or less? Well, it kind of looks less. We don't really know if it's not really drawn on the scale, but we do know a few things about this. We know that this would all be one radius, or the, whatever the radius is, because they all stem from the center of the circle. We do know that if this arc length is r, that that is one radian. If this is less than r, this would be less than one radian by a predictable amount. On the other hand, we know that if this is one radian, that creates an arc that's equal to radius. If this angle is less than one radian, it's going to create an arc that's less than your radius, and by a predictable amount, by a proportion. And so we can find a very nice formula for arc length right now. I'm going to show you how to do that. If we have this proportion where the radius compared to the angle, or the, I should say the arc length, the arc length compared to the angle that cuts it, has to be in the same proportion as the arc length compared to its respective angle that cuts it or subtends that arc length. So let's, let's look real careful, make sure we understand it. Make sure we understand that, hey, r, this arc length compared to alpha, which is one radian, we'll get to that in just a second, must be in the same proportion as a smaller arc length cut by a smaller angle. Those have to be equal. I hope you're seeing it, I hope you're seeing the proportion. Um, R sort of equals S, yeah, they're, they're the arc length idea, and alpha sort of equals or it corresponds to, corresponds to that theta. We can put that in the same relationship. Now, one thing that I just said, please remember that in order for this R to be the radius and the arc length, this angle has to be one radian. Now, this is a big deal because what it means is that the formula we're creating will not work for degrees. It will only work for radians. Why? Because it's built into our proportion. And so we're going to say that this is one radian. Now, if we hadn't done that, then we can use some, some things with degrees, but we, we do do that. And we see this formula very often in math where S is going to equal R times theta. And a lot of people try to use that for degrees. You can probably see it's going to happen. Um, and that's wrong because we're making this assumption that we're dealing with one radian to get that arc length of R. So if R divided by one radian, the arc length that's created by one radian, well, okay, we have that, it's going to be equal to the radius, has to still be in the same proportion as a smaller arc length compared, or a different arc length compared to a different angle. If we multiply both sides by theta, if we multiply both sides by theta, check this out. What we really have, multiply both sides by theta, this is gonna say, all right, theta cancels here, we got theta, we got all r times theta. But notice something, what happens with that? That really would be down here. Now, now use your unit conversions to think about what it would take in order to cancel out that idea of a radian, that unit. Well, that's a unit of length. R is an arc length and it equals the radius because we had chosen an angle of one radian. But that's a unit of length. It'd be like centimeters or meters or feet or whatever. Well, this is a radian. That, that's one unit, one rate, one of that particular unit of a radian. In order for that to be canceled, this has to be measured in radians. Do you see it? Are you seeing that your angle would have to be radians to get rid of that unit so that your arc length matches the units here? That's very important. If you try to plug in two degrees, or sorry, plug in degrees to the formula we're about to get, you're gonna run into some very major issues. Now, if we hadn't put one radian there, 
it would be okay, uh, but we'd have to have a degree, a degree for that particular relationship between radius and arc length that are equal. So going back to here, just make a note on this. This only works for radians because of what we did right there. And so their units simplify. So arc length is always equal to r times theta, the central angle that's creating that or subtending that arc, but it only works for radians. I hope that makes sense. I hope you're seeing the why, why that is. So if we want to do a little recap, we're going to do some conversions here in just a little bit, uh, finding arc length and finding some angles from this. But if you, if you want a little recap, here, here it is, a little 20 second recap. Radians are different than degrees in how they are measured. So a degree is 1 360th of a circle or a rotation around stopping where you start. A radian is, is different from that. A radian comes from a circle idea. And it says what a radian is, is if you have a radius, one radian is a central angle that's needed in order to create an arc length that's cut by two radii that equals the radii. So basically open it up until the arc length equals the radius and you have a radian. Now we work a lot with radians and this is the first formula that we really get with it. And you can see it only works with radians. And this happens very frequently in math where we get some formulas that only work with a certain type of angle. Uh, in this case, that angle is radians, and it has to be there in order for our units to cancel right here. In fact, everyone knows this so much, they don't even put over one radian because we understand it only works for radians, and that's why we don't put that. But can you see how, how a lot of students who don't grasp this, who've never seen this before, they go, oh, radians, I don't know, just whatever, let's put anything in there. It doesn't work, it does not work. And so make sure that you understand that this only works for radians because of the reasons I've said, don't plug in degrees like some students are prone to do. Don't be one of those students. Now let's go ahead and let's see if we can find arc length from angles and angles from arc length. So let's suppose we have a couple examples. We have a circle with a radius of six feet and we have a central angle of one third radians. Notice how I have to put that radians there. Otherwise we have no idea that we're dealing with any sort of angle whatsoever. It's definitely not degrees. Um, so what that means is that we have this idea of, all right, well, what if this angle isn't one radian, one full radian, it's just a third of a radian? Well, we should understand what that means now. We understand that that arc length should be, well, not as big as the radius. It should be a actually a third of that. And that's exactly what this formula does, and it's very, very nice. So we can use it, but it, it's kind of an intuitive idea. It's just a proportion. So let's set it up. Four radians of that right there. You got to cancel that out, that unit out. Our arc length is always equal to the radius times the central angle that's creating the arc length. Now it appears here that we have a unit issue. It, it appears that we, we look at it and go, okay, six feet times one third radians would be, uh, let's see, two feet feet radians, but because of where the formula comes from, assuming that we're dealing with a, a first subtended arc length that's created by one radian, this really has this over one radian idea. We normally don't put that radian because of that reason, because I explained to you that this only works for radians, we only try to plug in radians, and we rarely show that, but it is there. And we would get just six feet times one third. That's two, two feet. So if you have a radius of six feet and you have this arc that's subtended by an angle of one third radians, a central angle of one third radians, that arc length is going to be exactly two feet. It's kind of cool that we, we can measure around a circle. We use this for some very valuable things. In fact, in, in, in a little while, we're going to use it on how to convert between degrees and radians, radians and degrees. Now let's do the next one. What if we had a, a radius of 12 meters and an arc length of 16 meters? Could we figure out the central angle that's needed to create that, that situation? Now, now think about it. If this arc length is more than the radius, 
your central angle should certainly be more than one radian. And that's what's going to bear out for us. We can still set up the same way. And when we put this in here, we, we understand that when we, uh, when we substitute and evaluate this, we'd have 16 meters as our arc length. We got a radius of 12 meters times whatever our angle is. Now keep in mind, because this only works for radians, when you divide 16 meters by 12 meters and you get 4 thirds, the meters cancel and it appears that theta is a unitless measurement. It's not. Radians are built in. It's right here. We just don't write it. So just keep that in mind. When we get an angle out of formulas that only work with radians, they're in terms of radians. So four thirds of a radian, or one and one thirds radians, or 1.3333 radians. I'm really hoping I explained it well enough for you for you to understand um, what a radian is, where it comes from, the relationship. I know I've repeated myself several times. I'm doing it on purpose so that we understand uh, what, what it really comes from. Because we're about to start converting between degrees and radians, and we need to understand several things about them. Number one, that while they measure differently, they can do very similar things, tell you the size of an angle that sweeps out an arc or a portion of the XY axis. Uh, we need to be very comfortable going back and forth between them, but we also need to understand that a lot of the formulas that we deal with only work with one type of unit measurement, or you have to convert or go back and redevelop the formula. Um, so be careful with that. Most of our, our trigonometry as, as we deal with calculus is in radians. Almost all of it. Now, there's a few times when that's not the case, but almost all of it deals with this radians. It's just the general way that, that people go. It's a little bit nicer. Uh, you're going to get a lot of pies, like three pi over two and things like that. And so we're going we're gonna to get into that in the next video. I'm going to show you how to convert between degrees, radians, radians, and degrees. So I'll see you for that.